Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Last time, we discussed what happens to the virtues in heaven, and this time, what about the fruits of the Spirit? How do those fare in heaven? We discussed charity with the virtues in the last episode, so I'll just take a moment to look at each of the others. Joy. In heaven, more than in any other state, joy is perfectly fulfilled. Since all good things are present in heaven, so is joy. Peace. Being in conformity with the will of God. In other words, righteousness. This is also perfect in heaven, since it's an aspect of our own persons, which we need to be purified before we can go there. Patience. Although we usually think of patience as the willingness to wait for something that you don't already have, it really has more to do with being willing to bear difficulties in general. Now, some kinds of difficulties are actually good. Difficulty by itself isn't bad in the same way that failure is, so there are good reasons to think they'll exist, in some sense, in heaven. However, even if they didn't, it's entirely possible for a person to be willing to bear difficulties, even if there aren't any difficulties to bear. So patience can be perfect in heaven. Kindness means friendly, generous, warm-hearted, and understanding. In heaven, there won't be any reason to be unkind, because everyone there will also have the virtue of kindness, and won't take advantage of you for displaying it. So in heaven, kindness can be perfect. However, keep in mind with this fruit, that it doesn't preclude the possibility of acting as though one were unkind, in, for example, a stage performance or game of some sort. It would just create a sort of safe haven in which such games could be had. Goodness. In heaven, all goodness is perfectly present. Generosity. The only obstacles to generosity being perfect in heaven are the same ones that apply to charity, and we've already dealt with those in the last episode, so it seems that generosity can be perfect in heaven, even if no one needed to be given anything. Faithfulness is loyalty, and it's easy to see how that could be perfect in heaven. Those in heaven would be totally loyal to God and to the other faithful. Modesty. This fruit is about acting in such a way that it would encourage chaste behavior in others, and that can be done even when unchaste behavior is no longer possible. Therefore, modesty can be perfect in heaven. Self-control is another simple one to understand. We have trouble controlling ourselves in this life at times. Self-control will be perfect in heaven, and therefore we won't have that kind of trouble there. Finally, there's chastity. And the usual view is that sex, in the sense of being able to create other human beings, won't really be possible in heaven. Jesus said something similar, that those in heaven neither marry or are given in marriage, which would seem to make chastity impossible in heaven. However, I've also read about how God treats the church as his bride, and it occurred to me that those in heaven have a marital-like relationship with God, in which he supplies incredible joy and delight to them, in fact, it's possible that that may be the very fulfillment of what we call relationships. If that's true, chastity could still exist in heaven in some sense. It would just be about commitment to our relationship with God, which would be something that could be perfected. So the fruits of the Spirit all exist and are all perfected by the presence of God in heaven. Next time, what are sacrifices like in the afterlife? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.